order to understand human resource management as an organizational function, firstly, we need to recall what is management. You know, all organizations, they want to do things effectively and efficiently. Uh, you think of an organization, we talk about McDonald's, we talk about Apple, Walmart, I mean, any business entity, their main objective is to obviously gain profit and get a huge market share. But in order to get that profit, they would want to make sure that all the resources that they have and uh, the broader categories of resources are land, labor, and capital. Uh, if you have some idea of how uh, uh, these three things work, if you have some idea of economics as a subject or basic management as a subject, you will be able to understand that these are the three broader categories of uh, organizational resources, land, labor, and capital. By land, we understand that there are factories, there is a land, there is an office space, infrastructure. By capital, we understand that we need to have some money. Uh, and by labor, we understand that there are people working within an organization. So our focus in the area of HRM will be on the people. I mean, we are not going to talk about other resources. We will be specifically talking about the people involved in a business organization. Now, these people are generally called as employees or human resources. All right. So uh, getting a basic overview of management, it involves setting goals and allocating resources to achieve them. This is a very common kind of a example. And in order to understand management, we can always refer to sports. Uh, if you understand how sports activities work, you will be able to understand how business management works as well. Because if you talk about football, if you talk about any other team activity, any other team sports, we have a group of people who have different specialized uh, activities. For example, in football, we have a goalkeeper, we have a center forward, we have a person at defense, and they have their certain expertise in that area. So their coach or their team management would want to make sure that this team wins. So in order to win a specific match or a tournament, they would want to devise a strategy. Now that strategy includes using the right resource at the right time. Like what is going to be the role of the goalkeeper? What is going to be the role of their most valuable player and so on. So this whole strategy thing, this is how business management works as well. The organizations, they need to win the, their matches in their respective environments. They want to gain more profit than their competitors, and they would want to do the things right. So efficiency and effectiveness are two key words that we usually talk about in management. Moving forward, the primary functions of management are, we will be covering many things today, but uh, since this is an introductory session, even if you are not able to understand something later on in our sessions, I will be going through these functions in detail because this HR course is divided into eight or 10 sessions. So this is the first session that we are doing today. This is an overview. In our coming sessions, we will be focusing on one function at a time and going into the details of that. So if you have some basic idea of management, uh, if you have, if you are doing MBA or any business studies, you would be knowing that there are four core functions of management, which include planning, organizing, leading, controlling. We remember them by P O L C. I mean, P for planning, O for organizing, L for leading, and C for controlling. <clears throat> In a nutshell, what do these functions do? In planning, we set organizational goals and we determine a strategy. Just to keep things simple. I'm not going to go into further details of this because this is an overview. In planning function, what the organizations do, they understand what is their purpose of existence. What do they want to achieve? What is their goal? What is their objective? And the second question is that how they are going to achieve it. These two main questions are addressed in the planning part. Then comes the organizing part. The organizations, what they do is in organizing, they have resources. I just mentioned that we have land, labor, and capital. These are the broader categories of resources. So the organization needs to decide that which resource is going to play what role. In our HR area, in our uh, course of HR, we would be uh, having an assumption that humans, people, employees are the most valuable resource for an organization. So we'll be talking about that. So once we are done with planning and organizing in the third part, leading, 
you need to make sure the organization needs to make sure that uh, the goals are being met the company is moving in the forward direction towards achieving its goals that it determined in the planning section and all the resources are playing its appropriate role uh, leading involves motivating the employees as well leading involves uh, using different strategies to ensure that the forward direction is there and the fourth function is controlling in which the organization makes sure that if they have determined for example we take an example of apple company a very popular company that produces iphones and other products for example they set a goal for themselves that in 2030 they would want to go into ai technology i mean this is just a hypothetical kind of an example not real but just to help you understand so in their plans they will be determining that our goal is in 2030 we will be capitalizing on the ai artificial intelligence technology in the organizing part, they would be investing, they would be allocating different workload to different resources. For example, research and development is one department. They would want to focus on research and development department, allocate budgets to it so that uh, the company can invest in moving towards that goal of achieving AI technology expertise in 2030. In leading, they would want to make sure that they are moving in the right direction. Each and every quarter, every year, they would be making sure that they are making one step progress, uh, multiple steps progress towards their goal. And in controlling, they would be comparing. In 2030, they would be comparing that whether they were able to achieve their goals or not. In controlling function, the organizations, they cross-check, they measure that whether they have been able to achieve their goals or not. And if there is a deviation, means that if they have underachieved or if they have overachieved even, they would want to measure that deviation and understand that how this whole activity was completed. This was just to give you an example of what management is. And now we are going to move towards our HRM. Uh, apart from all the functions that an organization has, a business organization typically has, as I've already mentioned, it typically has five or six functions, which include Marketing and sales, I'm sure that you must be aware of it if you have a business background. Even if not, it is quite easy to understand that what marketing department would do. Then we have finance and accounting department. Then we have research and development department, production and operation department, supply chain department, IT department, information technology department. <coughs> but our focus would be on the HR department. Now, HR department or HR management is about managing the human resources within an organization. The goal or objective of HR department is to make sure that the employees, they become a source of competitive advantage for an organization. They become, the employees become the reason for success of an organization regardless of its industry. Whether it is working in telecom, whether it is working in manufacturing, uh, construction, I mean, you name it. Whatever the industry is, the company would want to make sure that humans, they become a source of competitive advantage. And to understand it, that how they are going to become a source of competitive advantage, the organization is going to invest on them. Our topic today will be focusing on the different areas of HRM on which the organization, they invest and how they related with the organizational strategy, how they related with overall organizational goals. The challenge for the HR managers is evolving with the passage of time because, you know, in this world, the nature of jobs is changing. It is evolving. If we look back in the times of COVID-19, uh, the recent pandemic, you know, everything was shifted to remote work. Like people were... Prior to the pandemic, people, they were going to the jobs, they were doing their nine to five work, then coming back. But in COVID times, there were restrictions, there were lockdowns, they could not go. So the companies, they switched to remote work. Now there is a shift, a change in the working environment. You know, the physical work, in-person work that you are going, that has its own dynamics and a remote work, work from home has its own dynamics. Now, who is going to make sure, which department in an organization is going to make sure that what are the policies, what are the strategies that are going to be there regarding remote work in order to make it more efficient and productive? HR department would want to have a clear view and opinion regarding this, that if the nature of job changes, then 
what directions are going to be given to the employees from the HR department, how the performance expectations are going to change, and what role can HR department play in order to make sure that the employees, they stay productive and they become a source of comparative advantage, all right? Similarly, global competition has, is increasing. I mean, the companies, they are learning new things. They are advancing. Their job natures are evolving. So HR department would want to keep a check, a close eye on what are the different needs of employees? How can we make them feel more productive? The o in a nutshell, HR department focuses on the people to become a source of competitive advantage. Now, I'm sure that if you do not have a business background, all this uh, summary that I've given to you right now will be too much for you to handle. <laughs> so don't worry. There is going to be a recording of this session available to you on, on the university's page. And I will be giving you these slides as well. And you can always reach out and ask me questions during the presentation and afterwards as well. So we do have something in the chat box. Just allow me to have a look. All right. This is a message from the administrator. Okay. All right, moving forward. So what is the strategic nature of HR? You know, in a business organization, uh, there are two broader categories. Some activities are operational and some activities are strategic in nature. Uh, if you have some idea regarding how a business organization is structured, it is basically divided into three broad, broad levels. We have top level, top management, which includes CEOs, board of directors who are there to make decisions for the organizations. Then we have middle management, and then we have operational people. You know, operational people, they just focus on day-to-day -day work, largely speaking. They focus on achieving day-to-day -day goals. They're not really concerned about the five years or 10 years standing of an organization, okay? So their job nature is limited in scope, whereas the strategic job nature is a bit broad in scope. Now, this slide right here tells us that HRM is not just an operational function. It is more of a strategic component when it comes to organizational decision making, when it comes to goal setting, HR should be involved. The human resource management should be involved as a strategic business partner in an organization so that it is directly involved in the decision making that is going on. Regardless of the industry or the nature of work that the business is doing, 10 years from now, whatever it wants to achieve, whatever its strategic direction is going to be, where it wants to go, it would want to have an involvement of HRM, Human Resource Management Department, in the decision making, in the policy making of an organization. This is the crux of the value of this function. HR needs to be a forward thinking mindset approach activity, which requires looking into the future, determining, the current standing of the organization and focusing on what future lies ahead from them and to try to play a role in terms of determining that people within an organization, they generate more value and they are eventually becoming the source of competitive advantage. The company can claim that our people are the best as compared to all our competitors because we have invested on them. We invested in which sense? In the different functions of HRM that are there. All right. Uh, once again, let me tell all of you that if it is too much for you to understand, you can always ask questions. And once you have the recording of this, you will be able to understand what I'm talking about. Uh, only if you have a business background, if, even if you don't have a business background, uh, just bear with me for next 15, 20 minutes, you'll get an idea what we are talking about. All right. Okay. So moving forward, uh, why is HRM important to an organization? I've already mentioned that uh, the people function, the employees function is considered to be a source of competitive advantage. The companies would want to make sure that their people uh, are very productive, they outshine and they become um, a factor which is like a differentiating factor when it comes to comparison with their competitors. They invest on their people, they train them, uh, they make sure that their career management is there, they make sure that they, their working environment is safe and conducive for their work uh, in order to perform really well. All the top companies in the world right now, they claim that their HR policies are top-notch. They claim that their concern 
their care, their value for their employees is their top most priority. This is what HRM's main objective is. This is what HRM is all about. Okay. So the, if you go on and do your specialization in HRM, if you do a business degree and you choose to opt HRM as your area of specialization, you can do certain certifications. Uh, these certifications are really helpful when it comes to securing a job as an HR manager. SHRM is a website, is a platform, is an organization that offers paid certifications. Their certifications are a bit expensive, but they guarantee uh, your future in an organization. You can work in an organization with these certifications. Similarly, HR Certification Institute is another organization that offers you paid certifications. This is the kind of a certification that we are doing right now, but this is your university certification, but you can always go to external entities and get your certifications. Now this right here today is the most important slide that we are going to talk about today because this is going to sum up all the activities that an HR department does, okay? It's not anything technical or complicated. Once I'm going to tell you, you'll be able to make up your mind that what these things are all about. They may, it may seem like a very complicated diagram with so many circles and different colors, but honestly speaking, it's not difficult at all. In an organization, we understand, in a business organization, we do understand that employees, they work. Now let us assume that it's a journey of an employee. Let us try to understand the HRM function in the context of a journey of an employee. Now the journey is going to start when the employee is going to get into an organization, when he or she is going to get a job and start his or her work within an organization. Now how that thing happens? The HR department in an organization, it determines the need. For example, if you are doing your specialization in marketing, for example, I'm just assuming. So a business organization like Walmart, like McDonald's, I mean, you, you, you can choose a company of your choice. A business organization determines a need that we need a person in the area of marketing to perform our marketing activities. The HR people, they sit within an organization and they understand that marketing is one of our important functions. And in order to perform that, we need a specialized person from the marketing area. We would want to get that person from the labor market, from outside the organization. Probably he's studying in some university or he's working in some other organization. We would want to get our hands on him or her and we would want to bring him or her to our organization. This process is called human resource planning. In human resource planning, there are two main components. You don't need to really memorize anything right now because in our next session that we'll be having next month, hopefully we will be having a full-fledged session on human resource planning because this is going to be in a continuity. But just to give you an overview, in HR planning, which is the first function as written in the staffing area, this is the first function, first activity that an organization does. The broader umbrella is staffing umbrella. In staffing, what we are doing, we are pe bringing people on board. We are encouraging people to join our organization. We are staffing. We are hiring people. Uh, in layman's term, we are hiring people. Okay? So, so in hiring, we would want to start with strategic human resource planning. Let me remind you once again what this function is. HR people, they sit together and they decide based on the data, not based on their assumption or their thinking, based on the data, the existing data of the organization that how many people are working in uh, what departments and what conditions. Based on the data, they determine a need for a future person to be inducted. What they do, they identify the need for the right person for the right job. This is the basic assumption of staffing that you need to have right person for the right job. For example, in order to teach you HRM right now, I am the right person to teach HRM because I have expertise of two decades. I mean, for the last 20 years, I've been teaching HRM. <clears throat> I have around four degrees in it. I'm about to complete my PhD this year, hopefully. 
<clears throat> in HRM. So I'm the right person for the right job. You can have a person having double PhD in marketing and ask you to teach HRM. That would be a misfit. He or she would not be the right person to do this job. So in HR planning, the main activity is to determine the need for future positions that are going to be there. All right, let us continue with the story once again. So the HR department realizes that we have a need. We want to have a person from a marketing specialization area and we would want him to be on board. So how are they going to reach out to him? What are they going to do? If you have any idea, write down in the chat box. Your organization needs a person from marketing expertise. What is going to be the first step? If you are in the HR department, what are you going to do? Use the chat box and write your response, whatever comes to your mind. You can send a direct message. You can send a message in the chat box, whatever you comes to your mind. You can use the chat box, Samuel. Um, you, I think that we will be having the discussion at the end. So you can use the chat box and write down your response. Thank you so much for that. You can use the chat box and write down. So once we understand, all right, there is an answer in the chat box. Advertise, very good. Mix in, that is really a right answer. Thank you so much for that because now I know that you guys have some idea regarding how a business organization works. Very good. Very good. Start from it. Very good. Wonderful. So we have two respondents. They are saying that we are going to start with advertising. Wonderful. This is the recruitment function. In recruitment function, what you need to do is uh, the organization plans to have the most talented pool of applicants. Pool of applicants. They would want to have, I mean, if you, they want to choose one marketing individual to join their organization, they would want to have at least five options to consider for. And yeah, this makes sense because they would want to have five top people coming to them, just giving you an idea. And they would want to then choose from them that which person is the right person for the right job. Very good. Steve is mentioning that we can have a company and try to reach Fine. Uh, we will talk about the different recruitment methods that one is to advertise. We can advertise in on social mediums. We can advertise on LinkedIn, on company websites. We can have a liaison with the headhunters, the recruiters. We can ask third party companies to hire that person for us. We can have uh, job fairs. We can set up events in which we invite in conferences in which we invite people from that area to come and then we can offer them a certain position at our job. So these are the different recruitment procedures. Once you have a pool of applicants with you, like you have five people and you want to fill in one position, you would want to go with selection procedure. Like you'll initially start with initial application. You would want to do some screening. Then probably since the number is only five, then you would want to go for a kind of a test maybe depends on your organizational policy. You may want to have a kind of a intake test. All right. And after that, you would want to go for interviews. So based on those interviews, you will be able to determine that who among those five applicants is the right person for the right job. So once you find that right person, you offer them the job. And when he or she joins, your staffing function is complete. Okay. So we are done with one function. Uh, <clears throat> those who are raising hands, you can always send me a direct message on the chat box because we are running really short on time. We are almost halfway through our session today. Uh, somebody is saying that they cannot hear me clearly. I, I assume that the rest of you are able to hear me clearly. If there is any issue in uh, my verbal, uh, my network or my clarity, then please let me know through my chat box. Otherwise, I assume that since people are responding, so you may need to check your uh, network and your system as well. <laughs> okay. Technical difficulties, they can arise. So staffing function completes when you have the right person inducted in your organization. The right term is onboarding. Onboarding means that the person 
who was in the market, who was probably working in some other organization, is now a part of your organization and is on board. He or she has joined you. So let us continue with the story. Now that person who has joined your organization, he or she will require a couple of weeks or, or probably a month to settle in. All right. They just they cannot just come in the organization and start working right away because the organizational culture varies. Uh, the company policies and procedures and how they do the work over there, it needs a lot of understanding. So HR department would want to make sure that they would want to have an orientation and socialization function. I hope that you can see my cursor. Orientation and socialization function is a part of training and development function, training and development umbrella or training and development head in which you would want to make sure that the employee who joins an organization, he and she or she finds this, this easy to adjust. You have a certain plan for them, a two weeks or a three weeks plan in which you probably offer them kind of a supervision. You associate somebody with them who takes them along and tells them about <clears throat> the different functions of the organization and how do they do things over there. Some companies, they offer apprenticeship. What they do is they offer a mentor. Uh, whenever you join an organization, they assign a mentor to you. So the mentor's main responsibility is to take you along and tell you about everything that is happening within the organization. The objective is to help you feel settled down. Okay. Similarly, socialization is the same function. Like you meet people, you, you know about the positions, you know about how things are done. The objective of this function is to make sure that you start being productive immediately, that you settle in quickly and then you start working so that you are off able to generate value. Similarly, uh, it may happen that there are some software, some tools that are being used in the organization, which the new employee may, uh, is not aware of because all organizations, they have their own information systems. They have their own technology based systems working. So there is a possibility that if you, if you are coming from a different organization, you don't know which software they are using. So it will require you some time to get your hands on that software, that learning mechanism, that learning curve would be there. So training and development function or HR department is largely responsible to make sure that all the required uh, skill orientations and all the required <clears throat> socialization activities are being performed. So the employee gets settled and starts working immediately. Training and development in itself is a wonderful, a very noble activity. This is my personal favorite area when it comes to HR or uh, departments. I think their most valuable work is training and development. This is what I believe, although they're, all the functions are very valuable. But in my opinion, training and development is the most valuable because in this uh, function, they are actually investing on the employee and they are investing on their skill set. The employee can leave the organization after a few years, but that skill set is going to be there. You know, this is the best part. I mean, whatever I am teaching you right now, we may not meet for the rest of our lives, may not. But the thing that I have taught you, it is going to be with you for the rest of your life. And this is a very noble and a best part regarding training and development activity. Good organizations, productive organizations, leading organizations, they invest a lot on the skill development of their employees. As we do understand that the technologies are changing, uh, the working systems are changing. So uh, change is something that is very constant. And HR department should be aware of all the changes that are happening. And its top priority should be to make the employees well equipped, trained to respond to those changes. Okay. Since currently we are talking about a lot about AI, I mean, in our curriculums in our courses, we are talking a lot about the role of AI, artificial intelligence, and how it is reshaping uh, all the industries, including education, including, um, I mean, all the business activities. So it is primarily the responsibility of HR department to make sure that what is going to be the role of AI, how they can use AI to facilitate their employees, how they can use AI to make sure that their organization is working well. They can embed it in form of a training and development program. Okay. 
training is a one time activity uh, development is a long term process like many trainings multiple trainings they end up becoming a development process so if an organization wants its employees to serve as a source of competitive advantage they would want to make sure that they the employees are trained and developed and employees they become loyal to an organization when they know that it is investing on all right you know in here in pakistan uh, we are observing our ramadan month as muslims we are observing ramadan and uh, we do fast we keep fast i mean it's a 13 14 hour fast so um, before my session like 15 20 minutes uh, before my session i just ended my fast so that is why i am having tea right now so please bear with me regarding that okay <clears throat> so uh, similarly it is the responsibility of an organization to make sure that it has to determine a way a procedure for career development of the employee let me give you an example a very interesting example and that is going to tell you a lot about how big companies work <clears throat> a very recent ceo of coca cola corporation global was uh, he was named mukhtar kent uh, he was from a turkish background and he served as the ceo of coca cola corporation now becoming a ceo the chief executive officer of a of a, of a company like coca cola is a big thing so probably we would be thinking that he comes from a business background and he comes from a family of businessmen and influential people that is not the case uh, like 20 25 years ago he started work in coca cola as a salesman you know a salesman position is a very like basic position a very operational activity uh it is like in the bottom of an organization is it is valuable work but as compared to becoming a ceo it's like very far away it's totally the other end so in 20 years from a sales manager to becoming a ceo although the credit goes to him that he must have been a person with exemplary skill set but the main factor is the organizational policies what we can learn from this story is that coca cola invests on all its people whether they are in the operational area they are working in in a specific region or working in a very operational posi position but they would want to invest on them so that they become a future leader and we have a we have a real example of of a person who started as a salesman and ended up becoming the ceo of an organization this shows that these companies they value their employees so much they give opportunities to all of them i mean it depends on the individual's talent and abilities and skills that whether he or she is able to Uh, capitalize on those uh, opportunities or not but this is called career development the big companies when you join them they tell you that if you serve with us for 10 years where you can end up if you serve with us for 20 years what is going to be your future and this gives a lot of clarity to the employees uh, ibrahim you can use the chat box and uh, share your question or opinion whatever you have to share always use the chat box because we have limited time so we cannot engage in a discussion right now but at the end for last 10 minutes we will be having some question as an answers all right so career development is another very critical and important function of hr department they would want to make sure that the employees who join their organization they have a clear career track in front of them this gives them a lot of motivation you know it gives them a lot of encouragement and motivation that uh if they work hard if they perform well they are going to get promotion opportunities they are going to grow in your in in their careers and good things are going to happen to them all right so the next function is if you have any question please feel free to use the chat box once again so the next hrm function is one of the basic functions is employee motivation it is the responsibility of the hr department to make sure that the employees they feel motivated and what better policy to make than to give them good rewards than to give them good salary 
perks and benefits. I mean, people, they work for money. There is no second opinion on that. Money is something that is very primary. Salary, it comes first. So top companies, they offer top salary packages and top benefits. Apart from the cash amount that is going to them, they offer them certain benefits like medical insurance, housing, travel allowance, some kind of a training and development opportunity. These all lead towards employee motivation. The HR department needs to develop policies to ensure that the employees, they feel motivated to perform their work. And uh, there are certain theories in the uh, motivational context. <clears throat> If you, if you have a background of management, once again, you would be knowing about Maslow's uh, hierarchy of needs. You will be knowing about Herzberg's two-factor theory. You may have an idea about theory X and Y. If these words sound familiar to you, this means you are from a business management background. If not, it's all right. You can always have a look. So performance management in motivation is another factor. You know, people, they like appreciation and there should be some kind of internal competition within an organization. It is something good. Uh, like people would want to compete for promotions. If I, along with my four or five other co-workers are working in the same position, we all know that one of us can get the opportunity to grow and excel in my career. But obviously it should be performance-based. A good an effective HR department would make sure that the performance expectations are clearly determined. They are clearly stated so that all employees know that what needs to be done. Rather than engaging oneself in organizational politics or some undue methods or modes of getting promotions, performance measures should be clearly promoted so that everyone knows that this company values work, talent, skills. It doesn't value other negative and irrational things. So setting up performance appraisals, setting up the standards is a job role of HR department. It depends upon the nature of the company that whether they do it on a quarterly basis, these evaluations, whether they do it on quarterly basis, on semi-annual basis, annual basis, it depends. Most organizations, uh, they conduct a performance review a performance appraisal at the end of a year so that they give an opportunity for the employee to perform within a year. And at the end of the year, they evaluate, they run a whole activity in the organization that is called appraisals activity or the organization can call it something else. But the main objective is that they evaluate the performance of all the employees that they have done within a year. The important positive part over here is that a good HR department, a good organization, would be giving clear-cut instructions to the employees that what is our performance expectation from you, okay? So that the employees are clear that this is what we want to achieve. Similarly, rewards and compensation is also a part of motivation and it is also a requirement of HR department. They have to make sure that what kind of rewards would the company be able to offer, whether they are tangible rewards, intangible, whether they are monetary or non-monetary rewards. You know, rewards can be related to money or gift certificates, prizes, or they can be non-monetary as well. I mean, some kind of a benefit that encourages or appreciates the employees. Same goes for employee benefits. This is something very critical. You know, top performers, the top employees, the people, right people for the for, for right positions, when they are in the market, they always look for companies which offer best packages. Packages in terms of reward structures, salaries. So the best employee is going to come at the best price. All right. So if a company wants to get their hands on the best employees, they would want to make sure that their packages, their salaries are market competitive. Okay. And they are like, they can claim openly that what they offer, no other company would be able to do that. Okay. So the fourth function is maintenance function in which the organization, uh, the HR department would want to have a clear cut policy regarding safety and health procedures. You know, in manufacturing companies, in factories, uh, when people, they are working, their life is at, is facing some kind of a risk because they are dealing with machines. They are dealing with heavy machinery and uh, 
uh, other items. So it is the responsibility of HR to make sure that safety and health procedures are there. In an organization, uh, you know, in, in construction companies, the people who are wearing the yellow hats, it is mandate, mandatory for them to do so. So it is an obligation on them from their company that God forbid if something bad happens to you, so if you make a claim on the organization, this happens in terms of insurance claims that if right so health practices are not there within an organization, if the machines, uh, if the SOPs, standard operating procedures to operate those machines are not clearly instructed, if God forbid an employee faces some kind of an accident while dealing with those machines, he or she can actually sue the organization. And it, it can cost the organization a lot of money and a huge dent on their reputation. You know? So uh, the HR department needs to make sure that their safety and health procedures are top notch. It is their responsibility to determine SOBs. Similarly, going back to the COVID-19 example, you know, wearing masks, making sure that the employees who are coming, they are wearing masks, they are maintaining the distance, they are using the sanitizers. All the SOPs given by the government, by the CDC, by the medical authorities, it was bound for the organizational members to follow them. And that it has to be insured by the HR department because it is responsible to insure. This also includes the well-being of the employees, the mental and physical health of the employees. You know, when it comes to working, the employees may feel burden at times. Their working hours may be causing them stress. Their nature of work may cause them stress and stress is not good. The kind of stress that we experience within organizations, they are not good. So the HR department would want to keep an eye, a close check on this thing that uh, what are the employees feeling? What is the level of their well-being? Uh, if anyone faces some kind of a mental challenge, mental health issue or a challenge regarding work, HR is supposed to provide solution for that. If uh, somebody is obviously facing a physical challenge at work, HR is supposed to make policies that these things do not happen. In maintenance function, then we have communications. What it means is that uh, HR department needs to establish a clear cut uh, communication channel among the organizational functions, systems, it works as a bridge. You know, HR department works as a bridge between different departments and functions within an organization. So it makes sure that the communication, it comes to and fro and everything related to employees passes through the funnel of HRM. This is something very important. And then employee relation is another factor. You may have heard about unions. Unions uh, within organizations in US largely, unions is a mandatory part of an organization. Like employees are given a platform on which they can get together and they can raise their voice and opinions. They have a union head. And uh, there is a concept of collective bargaining, which means that these union people Whenever an issue comes, they talk with the management, they talk with the administration and they try to do bargaining and they serve as representatives of the employees. Okay, so the responsibility of HR in this scenario is to regulate the union, to make sure that the union is doing a productive work, to have a regular liaison, a contact with the union so that employees, they feel that they are being heard and all things are moving in a positive direction. These are largely the main HR. I'm just, I've just given you an overview of the whole HRM course. This is like the whole course of it. If you go through next sessions, we'll be talking about these functions one by one. So this is just an overview that what is what are the major main responsibilities of HR department. Now these are in this diagram, they are being influenced by external influences, which include labor unions, I have mentioned the evolving management practices, how the companies, they do work. Uh, the government legislation laws and the factor of globalization, like there are different things happening at a global scale. So the companies, they need to adapt accordingly. All right.
Uh, this was a bit too much for, for the new people to handle, I assume, that who do not have a business background, it was a bit too much for them. But this is what HRM is all about. Now, final three slides uh, before we conclude the session and lead towards our question answer thing. So this is the, the external factors are further described. And as I've already mentioned, that there is strategic environment. It includes globalization, which is one of the leading factors when it comes to uh, affecting the functions of HR. Just let me look quickly, have a look at the chat box. There are some interesting comments coming. Let me read them for you. Hello, Mr. Umar. My question is, what if the new employee is not trained as supposed to? Uh, in good organizations, uh, the, the main focus of the organization would be on employee training because it is understood that if employees are not trained, then obviously they cannot perform well. They are going to face all the negative things. They are, their performance will decline. They won't be productive. They won't be able to become a competitive advantage. So it's a lose-lose situation, all right? So Fid Fidel says, hello, everyone. Greetings from Kampala. This is a very, very important course in human being life. Once again, thank you very much, dear Umar Hassan, for this wonderful lesson. I'm really enjoying it. My question is, do you think if HR does not have enough power to the ED, can he, she influence such change in the organization? You know, my point uh, that I mentioned in, in the earlier part of my session was that HR needs to be working as a business partner. You know, HR should be involved in all the decision making. HR should be top management. Most companies, even nowadays, they just treat HR as a function. Just like any other function, just like marketing and sales, just like finance and accounting, just like any other function within an organization. This is something that is wrong. So wrong in a sense that it does not serve the purpose. Uh, if you want to make sure that your HR department is truly in charge, it is like really contributing to the benefit of the organization. You need to have it involved in the top decision making. You need to have it as a business partner. All right. I hope this answers your question. Okay. Uh, Tekla Abdul, I hope that I'm pronouncing your names right. Can you tell us about the HR theories? You know, H HR, it does not have theories in itself. It has majorly functions, but these functions are based upon many theories which are from psychology, sociology, employee motivation. Uh, it's a whole subject, another subject altogether. But I did mention a few of them today, like Maslow's Need Hierarchy, Herzberg, McClelland. These are a few of the renowned authors of theories. You'll find these uh, their motivation theories very interesting. Or right, Fidel says that uh, in African context, this can be done if the management are willing and if they are positive to love their employees. Let us know the strategy to overcome the selfishness of some organizations. Thank you so much. Okay. Uh, so many questions coming, really. I'm so happy to see that uh, there's so many questions coming. Wonderful. <laughs> uh, I need to take a sip of my tea once again <laughs> just to gather my strength. We have our prayer going on right now, so that uh, sound will also be coming. But all right. Uh, to overcome the selfishness of some... Um, it doesn't necessarily mean that uh, area-wise... Organizations are mean, I mean, Pakistani organizations or African organizations or any other organizations. You know, multinationals, the organizations which are working all over the world, which are at the top, they understand the true value of human potential. The organization can be mean, it can be like uh, doing negative things for the employees, but it is at the end of the day, it is just negatively affecting its own performance. What good is it bring, bringing to the company as a whole? So the companies, the top 100 companies, uh, I share a list with all of you, or you can have a look at it on the Google. You can write top 100 companies to work for. These are the companies which has exemplary HR practices and working environments. You will find many renowned companies working over there. And the thing that makes these companies special is that they value their employees. They care for them. 
their top priority is the well being the the productivity the um, all the aspects regarding the employees okay all right the next question there's uh, so many questions and i since i'm like commenting on them so i'll continue doing that hi everyone dear omar hassan may you have some experience about training and some compensation issues for example someone has opportunity to participate in specific training and how to hire them to better position thank you uh you know it is like a continuing process within our within an organization a training and development is something that arises as a result of tna training need analysis the companies they conduct tna to determine that in order to make sure that the work that is expected from the employees if they are performing it if they should be performing it well then we should be offering them the desired trainings the best companies in the world are famous for their training opportunities they invest a lot on their employees all right there are so many questions coming really uh, <laughs> it's really overwhelming i mean i'm finding it very exciting i'll quickly go through the next questions as well some are coming in the group chat some are coming as direct messages a uh, greeting zumar hasan i must comment on your outstanding presentation how do we empower hrm uh, you know hrm is by default present in all the functions of an organization hrm is like the blood it's like the dna of an organization so the company just needs to realize it the top management needs to realize that we need to have hr people as this is this was the main point of my presentation today that hr department should be working as part of the top management they should be in the main decision making this is how you empower them this is how you make sure that your people get the true value i mean if you are focusing more on the technology if you are focusing more on the machines and more on product expansions and less on employees people will know <laughs> it's not rocket science but if your organization is investing more on people and relatively less on all the other factors then the people would want to give them the true value this is the main hypothesis or assumption of the hr department all right good morning from jamaica how was thinking esg dei effect i'm not sure i'm able to get your question so if you can please rewrite that okay i share the theories in the chat how is how one can maintain a neutral state getting to new star sound without sentiments daniel your question is regarding uh, how to have a sound judgment without sentiments or minding the relationship you know relationship is something very constant and people are we are normal human beings we do have that bias that error we do make it so uh, the hr department needs to set up a performance management system in which human bias is minimized for example if i am a manager and i need to evaluate all 100 of you there are 100 participants attending today <laughs> so if i have to evaluate all of you this factor should not come in role in play that how many of you do i know personally and how many of you would i favor because that will put a whole question mark on the whole performance management system let me give you an example of google you know what google is doing google relies solely on data to do all the decision making google claims that we do not need people to do our decision making we need data to do our decision making this is an interesting approach and still under work but they rely solely on data since their business model is based on data i mean the search engine the all, all the other things that they are doing it is based on algorithm and data so they they think they believe that all hr activities can be done through data as well that is an interesting approach and if you can have a look at it you will get your answer all right so let me quickly finish uh, my content and then we will revert back to if we have further questions uh just three more slides to go uh, the strategic environment of hrm it focuses on what is happening globally the improvement in technology i have already mentioned workforce diversity is something very critical very important like people coming from different backgrounds different mindset uh different geographical regions different um, working approaches the organizations they tend to take it as a challenge as an opportunity 
a good manager will always take a challenge as an opportunity. Some people would say that uh, workforce diversity is a challenge and we should minimize it, but multinational companies, they want people to come from different backgrounds. They want their environment to be filled with uh, diverse mindsets, okay? So, uh, changing skill requirements, already talked about it, a sense of continuous improvement that the environment is continuously evolving. So this evolution should be positive. It should be towards improvement. Similarly, the role of ethics. The question that you asked regarding personal relationships in evaluation, that is related somehow to uh, HR and ethics as well. That the role of HR should be neutral. You know, we talk about harassment issues as well. Uh, dealing with harassment is another important factor that HR deals with. And it needs to be very clear. It needs to be very neutral, very clear. Uh, very specific, very elaborative regarding its uh, practices, including like harassment, just to give you an idea. Then there is government legislation, which is affecting the organization. Labor laws are there uh, in different countries. There are different labor laws. You can always have a look at that. And uh, the last thing is that management principles, they are evolving. Like management, it has its own eras uh, from traditional to modern. Currently, th this is like scientific management or the different authors have rated it differently. So as a management student, as a person understanding management, one should be able to clearly know that what era are we living in right now? I believe that this era is, uh, I believe this is my opinion, that this era is like... Uh, it has two main components. One is the humans and the other is the artificial intelligence. I think this is the era regarding which HRM needs to make its further policies. So this was all about my presentation today. Uh, I did try to answer the questions as well. Let me have a look if we still have further questions. Okay. As we know that each organization has strategy, also we know that we have private organization and public as well. Could you share so far for both, which one more effective in related to HRM issue? Uh, I'm not sure about the African context or um, uh, context of any other country, but uh, in our country, in Pakistan, we are like a developing country and our public sector organizations are like way behind when it comes to private sector because private sector uh, companies, they are like, their survival is on earning money. On Whereas public sector companies' survival is on our taxpayers' money. <laughs> so the public sectors are going to survive as long as we, the, uh, the people are surviving. But private sector companies cannot survive if they don't adapt to the leading trends. Or And that is the reason why you will see that in top 100 companies in the world, there is no public company. There is no government sector organization. They're all private organizations. They're all working for money. They have the leverages to make the decisions. All right, the next question is, can you explain more on conflict, absenteeism, loss of productivity, overload? I mean, these are like very broad concepts, but uh, if you allow me to explain, it, if HR keeps an eye, keeps their hand on the pulse of the employees, it will be knowing that what are the emerging needs, which need do we want to address first, which later. I mean, HR department should be in a position like after completing performance appraisals, HR department should be knowing and highlighting to the top management that what are the leading issues that the employees are facing, whether it is lack of teamwork, it is lack of leadership, uh, it is work overload, stress, whatever it is. So I believe that like in each year, HR should be coming up with a plan that this year we want to work on stress management. This year we want to work on uh, interpersonal relationships. I mean, they should have an agenda focused uh, based on the results that they get from performance appraisals, all right? So good evening from Zimbabwe. Good evening is supervision of subordinates, a role for HRN. Uh, you know, HRM is is a, a department. It, just like any other department, it has its own hierarchy. It is not supervising any other department as such. It is providing a supportive role. Basically, it is offering a supportive role to all the other departments. You know, 
it's like it's like the mother of an organization. I mean, when people they have complaints, they run to HRN. You know, in houses, when kids have complaints, they run to run to their moms. So typically the role of HRM is of a mother. So when people they have issues, they have problems, they run to the HR department. <laughs> I hope that clears. Okay. How do worker committees protect themselves from victimization from HRM? Uh, if HRM is bound to do victimization, then probably unions can play a very important role. Employee unions, uh, they work as a shield, as a protective guard. They protect the interest of the employees. So the in an organization in which the unions are there, uh, I think so that US law, it permits the organizations. It, basically encourages the formation of unions within an organization. Whereas in Pakistan, uh, unions are considered as a bit uh, illegal in a way because they are pressure groups. They want to pressurize the management. Uh, so in order to protect the rights of employees uh, and to help them to deal with victimization, I think unions can play.